are doing great today. Um, I know this is my second video for this week, and I don't usually do two in a week, but the Lord really got something on my heart um, to talk about discipline. Um, so, this morning, before I got out of bed, uh, the Lord really was bringing back to my mind uh, when I first got diagnosed with diabetes. Let me tell you that story. I went in for a routine checkup, and the doctor, uh, my doctor at that time, he um, told me, your sugars are 8.8, um, and that's high, that's, that's uh, diabetic level. And the fr after the shock of being diagnosed with diabetes at 33, um, the first thing after, um, after the shock is, um, that I did personally was throw out, throw out all the white pastas in my cupboard and got rid of all of the, um, got rid of all the bad foods in my, uh, in my cupboard and started to eat right. I went, my sugar went from 8.8, .8, um, which is diabetic level, um, to a, I think now it's, a, now as of 5 something, it's at regular level, and that was in less than 6 months, and I was only on uh, medication for about 6 months. Uh, most of that was my diet, and I came today uh, to talk about discipline. Uh, with um, in in a new year, we often make New Year's re resolutions. Well, New Year's resolutions I found don't work. Uh, what does work is developing a discipline. Um, I looked up on the internet. I went to Marion Webster's dictionary.com and it says discipline as this. Wait, let me get it up. Um, okay. Uh, it says discipline as um, cont control gained control gained by enforcing. Oh no, that's the wrong definition. Sorry. Um, Orderly or prescribed conduct, conduct or pattern of behavior. An orderly prescribed conduct, pattern, or behavior. That's Webster's definition of a discipline. Um, no, 
it's no wonder to me why the Bible says um, the Lord does things in decency and in order. Instead of making a New Year's resolution and and uh, quitting by February, starting off strong and petering off, uh, develop a discipline of whatever you have, whatever you're doing, whether it's a discipline to lose weight, a discipline. Uh, to increase your prayer life, a discipline to read your word, a discipline to get closer to God, a, a discipline to uh, spend more time with your children, a discipline to study in school and get good grades. Anything can become uh, a discipline. It just has to be an orderly prescribed conduct pattern or behavior. The key to that, the key to, to words to that in my mind are pattern and orderly. So you can a disciplined person has a sense of order to their life, not perfection. Order is Order is different than perfection. Uh, perfection for me is a false sense of everything being perfect, whereas order is um, things fall in line according to a specific pattern. That's what that's what order means for me. And I think instead of making a revo resolution, develop the the better way to look at it is developing a discipline. So back to diabetes and how I beat it. A lot of people said, "How did you lose thirty pounds? How did you do this? And how how did you get your sugars down? How did you get off of medication in six months?" I'll tell you how I did it, with discipline. Um, whether I wanted to or not, I got rid of all my bad foods, um, all the bad carbs. I educated myself on what were the good carbs and what were bad carbs. There are good carbs and there are bad carbs. I under I um, did some research on diabetes and how it affects me and I asked uh, the dietitian um, at my medical center uh, questions about how to eat. Um, I just gained education and to to um and some of the stuff that they told me to do was well, it wasn't wrong but it wasn't right for me so what I had to do was along with um, medical advice and medical advice of my doctor, I had to do my own research. And that wasn't all online reading stuff. That was asking friends. That was reaching out for help. That was talking to other people who had gone through it before. Um, my dentist, when I got diagnosed with diabetes, Diabetes, and uh, I, um, and she, t and I told her, she said, make sure you keep your sugars within a seven or an eight. And it is, it was the best advice ever, and that was from my dentist. <laughs> um, so I didn't suffer alone. So when you're developing a discipline. And not just a 
resolution. Um, make sure you first get educated either by medical professionals or by books or by, you know, um, if it's something spiritual, your pastor or a minister, or if it's something health-wise, maybe um, someone who has gone through it before, some a professional person who can help you. And then, too, um, make sure you get the advice of people who have been there before. People who have gone through it before, people who have, have struggled through it, what you're struggling through before. I, I know my friend, uh, Mitris, uh, hi Mitris, if you're watching this, um, she's, She's diabetic as well, and I went to her for advice, and not only, not even advice, but just support. I don't know how many Sundays I, I was, I said to Beatrice, how are you doing? And she told me, and I told her how I was doing, and I told her how I felt, and she told me what was going on with her, and that gave me strength. Just to know that I, was, I wasn't I was alone. I wasn't the only one struggling with this. I wasn't the only one uh, uh, crying when I couldn't eat certain foods. And even in that, when I first got diagnosed, it was really lonely. Even with all the support... Even with the, all the medical per, personnel and the diabetic program that I became a part of, and even with all the staff, um, my attendance at the place where I was living, even with all that support, the support of my family, the support of friends like Mitris and other friends, it was still hard. There was, there was some stuff I had to walk through on my own. And there was some stuff in that journey that I really had to struggle through and wrestle through. And that's one thing too. When you're developing a discipline, some, yes, he, yes, God will send people. Uh, God will send medical professionals and information and friends to come alongside you. But there are some things when you're developing any discipline that sometimes you just have to struggle through. And in that struggling through, God will teach you about you and God will teach you about Him. And even though, praise the Lord, I am technically not diabetic anymore, I am still watching what I eat very well, and I still um, have I've kept off the 30 pounds that I lost. Um, so... I'm still keeping healthy. And yes, I do have down days. I do have days where I, where my uh, portion control is out of whack and ev everything is, everything is not the way it should be. But you know, when I have those days, I don't beat myself up and say, oh, I'm diabetic again. I just get back on the horse and say, you can do this. You can do this. You're able to do this. You made a mistake, but but you you are not your mistake. That is what you did. That's not who you are. Some of us, when we're developing a discipline and we fall off, we say, 
oh, that's it, and we don't get back on the wa wagon. But if you've fallen off the wagon in your discipline this year, just get back on and, and do it again. And develop a habitual uh, discipline for it. And, and, and don't let yourself um, give yourself an excuse. Like, if your discipline is to get up at 5 in the morning and walk, don't say, oh, I'm not a morning person, I can't do that. Set your do whatever you have to do to stick to that discipline, whether you want to or whether you're not, or your body's saying I need some more sleep, uh, whether you're saying that I'm not like her, so I can't do that. Yes, you can. Yes, you can get up at five and do it if if that's what you have to do that's what you have to do because your life is worth more you can do this you can do this for your children you can lose weight you can you can you can spend time with your family you can um balance your work and your children and the other thing is, find the tools that work best for you. Because a lot of tools, they don't work for everybody. So find, get the information, but find the tools that work best for you. So if you can't get up at 5 o'clock in the morning because you have you know, other responsibilities or your work or whatever, um, find another time, maybe in the evening, to go for a walk that works best for you. So, don't beat yourself up if you can't do it. Find what works best with your schedule, and when you find what works best with your schedule and develop the, uh, developing and discipline, stick to it. Don't you tell your mind, no, we're doing this. No, we're walking. No, I'm going to quit work at 4 o'clock instead of coming home at 10. I'm going to spend time with my family. I'm going to do this. You tell, you tell your body what you're going to do. And the Lord will, help, will give you the strength to do that, but you have to take the first step. God won't t take the step for you. He'll help you in the step, but he won't move your legs and let you pack up from the office. You have to take the first step, and when you take the first step, it'll, it'll begin to to um, to register in your brain that, okay, she's doing this. And all, all your, your discipline will become easier. No, uh, the more you do it, it will become easier. When you first start it, it will be like drudgery. You'll be, you'll be, uh, for me, when I first started eating right, I was crying every day. I was like, oh, I can't eat that. Oh, I can't eat this. This is so hard. Why can't, why can't the Lord just heal me? But as I um, began to be disciplined, it was, it came up, it started to become easier and easier. It was a challenge. It was really hard some days at the beginning. But as I began to do it more and do it more and eat right and start to exercise and dance and move around and I saw the weight coming off, uh, I felt rewarded. I felt so much better. 
And now I don't even miss half the things that I used to have. And now I've, I, my ha now my discipline has created a new normal. And I look back at the sugar I used to consume and I'm like, what? I used to eat that and yes, and I, as I said before, I have fallen since then, but when I fall, I get back up. One fall or two falls, it's not gonna, like, you're not doomed forever just because you fall once or twice. Um, he said, he, um, Jesus said, a righteous man falls 70, 70 times 7. But, but every time they get back up. So every time you fall, Get back up. Just get back up and know each day. Know each day is new. Each day comes with a grace for that day. His mercy is new every morning. Every morning you wake up, God's mercy is new. There is a new grace for that day. So... Start a discipline. Start a discipline. And you can be a disciplined person. You're not a procrastinator. You're not a like, lazy person. You can change. You can change. All you have to do is make a decision and start a discipline. And even if it's to start small... Like I said when I talked about growth, um, growth often starts small. I talked about Rich Wilkerson and his mother's growth chart. And I said, uh, he said, you didn't even notice how much you were growing because it was small. So, so the that's the thing with discipline too. You don't even notice that you're developing a discipline because it starts small. So don't be afraid to start small. And and you can do this. And you're worthy of this. You're worthy of health. You're worthy of family family time. You're worthy of whatever God has set up about for you to do. You're worthy of it. You don't have to stay in that place of apathy, of being lethargic. You can live your God-ordained best life. Every promise in the word can be yours, is yours. It applies to you, beloved. You, wherever you are, he knows your name. He knows what you are struggling with. And every promise is available for you. Not somebody else. Not just your pastor. Not just, not just your preacher or or some minister out there. You. He's made those promises to you. His word is for you. And every every promise in his word is yea and amen. Yes and amen. Everything he says in his word is true. And it does apply to you. It does apply to you. It doesn't matter who you are. God is no respecter of person. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that he is Lord, you will be saved. If you did that, you are a child of God. And as a child of God, you deserve and your kingdom rights are every promise in that book. And everything, every every promise in the Bible. 
and everything that he said to you in the dark will come to pass. If he said that you you, you are going to start that business and that business will change the world, you will start the, the business. If he said that you'll be the mother of, of children, you will be the mother of children. Also, even though you're in your 40s, maybe he's got an adopted child for you to be the mother to. Mother to. Maybe he's got a host of children for you to be the mother to, or um, people for you to mentor. You never know what God has planned. And every promise in his book is for you. There is not a promise that is not for you. He loves you so much, beloved. And he wants you to prosper and be in good health. He says, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in good health. He doesn't mean even as your soul prospers. So, he wants you to prosper physically. He wants you to prosper emotionally. He wants you to prosper financially. He wants you to prosper spiritually and be in good health. He wants you to be in good emotional health, a good spiritual health, good mental health. He wants you to have everything that pertains to life and godliness. He loves you, beloved. He went to the cross for you. And there is nothing that he's not got enough to give you. But you need to develop a discipline. You need to develop discipline. And it will be tough when you first start. But the more you do it, it will become easier and easier and easier and easier. So guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, take care. Comment and, comment and share these videos. Let, let me know if there is a topic that you want me to tackle or if you have any questions or anything. And, and feel free to share these videos uh, with your friends or or with someone you think um, could use them. I often forget to say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, share them, comment. And let me know if there's something that you want me to tackle or address or any questions you have, appropriate questions you have. I don't know I don't know everything but I'm open to answering all kinds of stuff. So let me know, okay? Have a good evening. You made a way when our backs were against the wall. And it looked as if it was over. You made a way. And we're standing here only because you made a way. You moved mountains. You caused walls to fall. With your power, perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made a way. You made a way. When our backs were against
against the wall. And it looked as if it was over. You made a way. And we're standing here only because you made a way. You move mountains and you cause walls to fall with your power. Perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. Understanding here only because you made. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and you. Peace. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you. And within you, he is with you, he is with you in the morning, in the evening, in your coming, and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing. He is for you, he is for you. Amen. Bye, guys.